Hey everybody, let's get them thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, click the notification bell. My PayPal me link will be in the description box. Donations are needed. Um, but you know, you still take care of um, home and family first. It, but what's needed more than donations? Y'all, let's get these thumbs up, all right? And share the videos. All right, now let's get back to everything. Now, here's the thing. This is assuming that Herodotus is correct. Um, between the insult and the battle, Amasis died and left the country in the hands of his son. Um, Semitic III, also known as Semeticus. Semetic III was a young man who had lived largely in the shadow of his family. Um, great accomplishments and hardly equipped to fend a hostile force. Then word of the um, uh, Persian mobilization reached him. However, he did his best to mount a defense and prepare for battle. Now, on another account that the Egyptian for defenses were fortified, right? So this is another account of this. Egyptian um, defenses were fortified, all right? And basically, it would have been a hard battle to win, all right? He was counting on assistance of the Greek who deserted him and was without middle, military counsel, uh, Fangs and Halicarius, whatever, his father's advisor, who allegedly gone over to the Persian side, all right? Semitic III was therefore left on his own to handle the crisis. Semitic fortified his position at Pelusium near the north of the Nile and waited, um, awaited the Persian attack while simultaneously preparing his capital of Memphis to withstand a siege. The fortress of the uh, uh, Pelusium was strong and well provisioned and was the capital. The young pharaoh who had only ruled six months at the time, must have felt confident he could repel any attack. But um, with Semitic, Semitic, Semitic the III did not count on, however, was Cambyses, excuse, excuse me, Cambyses II's cunning. I forgot to bring a, a cup of water to drink. Now, one moment, I'm gonna get something to drink. All right, and so we have the second century um, CE writer um, Polyanus describes Cambyses' um, second approach in his stratagems, which he wrote in the hopes of helping uh, Marcus Aurelius and Burris in their campaigns. In their campaigns. All right, Poly recounts how the Egyptians were successfully successfully holding back the Persian advance when Com um, Cambyses II suddenly switched tactics. The Persian king, known the veneration of the, the Egyptians held for cats, had the image of Basset painted on his soul shield and further arranged um, his frontline dogs, sheep, cats, embassies, and whatever other animals Egyptians hold dear. All right, and that's where he pulls this from. The Egyptians under um, Sem Semantic Third, seeing that their own beloved goddess on the shields of the enemies and fearing to fight lest they injured the animals being driven before the enemy, surrendered their position and took flight in a rout. Many were massacred on the field and Herodotus reports seeing their bo bones still in the sand many years later. He even uh, commented on the difference between the Persian and the Egyptian skulls. The Egyptians not killed at um, Pelusium fled to the safety of Memphis with the Persian army in pursuit. Memphis was besieged and fell after a relatively short interval. All right, Semantic 
III was taken prisoner and was treated fairly well by um, Cambyses II until he tried to raise a revolt and was executed. So, what's the point in all of this? That every time we get into woman worship, that worship, one, causes a weakened mentality in the men. I mean, weakened men in mentality in the men, where the worship of the woman supersedes the value and the good of the community as a whole. For fear of rallying up the demonic anger of the woman, the men of Egypt died in a rout behind the worship of the woman. And yes, she was a black woman because the Egyptians were still black at this time. And they call it psychological warfare and the other account is that as the Persians were mopping up the Egyptians, they mocked them for worshiping a woman. So in another account, not only were they, they mocked the men. And the reason why they were massacred, because they seen them as weak because they worshiped the woman. And they was like, how do you give up your kingdom for the worship of the woman? It, it was beyond them, and they laughed at them. They were mocked. Understand this. Now, in saying this, and this also goes out to these Hotep people, there you see that there you see when the worship of the woman ends up getting your kingdom destroyed. But look at what the men built as tribute. Keep in mind to you Egyptologists that all but one of the pharaohs were men. And the pharaoh, Hatshepsut, that was a woman, was pretending to be a man the whole time and had men that were directing her. Okay, so let's just not get this twisted in any way, shape, form, or fashion. All these things that were built and the strength of Egypt came on their men, the ingenuity, the men. In every culture, the difference is that the women were never equal to the men still aren't equal to the man, ain't going to ever be equal to the man. In the army, there's a physical fitness test and the standard sheet in which the man has to meet and the woman has to meet. Some things would surprise you. Okay, so for you feminists out there that think things are so fair, right? Here is the minimum component, all right, for the male versus the female army. The run time, the two mile run, the male. or whatever the runtime is, is 13 minutes, 36 seconds, 
for the male. For the female, it's 16 minutes. Sit-ups, that's the only thing that's close. So the woman almost get three more minutes to run the same distance for the minimum component requirement. All right, the male, 42 sit-ups, female, 38. The male has to do four more than hers to get the same. Push-ups is ridiculous. The push-up, and I'm reading the lowest thing, 18 for females, the 30-year-old, 33 for the males. Minnow. All right, and this might be the Air Force because this is a mile and a half. So they get to run a mile and a half, right? For um, in the Army is 15 for the two mile run, or, uh, or it might be six, 15 or 16. It's 16 minutes for the two-mile run, and the girls, the women, they get 18 or 19 minutes. All right, so let's look at the Marines. All right, and, and you will see the same thing. That the males will always have to do more. And... The women can do less and be considered equal as far as the points that they get. And why do they do this? So that women can be in the military. So it won't be that hard for them to serve with men. They have different standards. Their standards are lower. They have a lower threshold. They get more um. They get more minutes to run. Army physical fitness test. All right. So what we have here is we have passing. And then we have the maximum. All right. So in push-ups, the men have to do 42 to pass. The women have to do 19. In the Army, the only thing that's equal is sit-ups is because women have extra muscles that should allow them to do is the same amount of sit-ups as the men. So because of the birth um, thing, they have extra stomach muscles. So sit-ups are e actually easier for women than they are for men or should be. There's this little chair thing that women can do that men cannot because men don't have that muscle. All right. But then if you look at the run for the minimum, right? Think about this. The men's minimum in the two mile run almost matches matches. The female's maximum. Wait a minute. Look at the push-ups. The minimum push-ups for a man, 17 to 21. The minimum push-ups he need to just pass equal the maximum push-ups for a female. So the say a man does 42 push-ups. He passes, he barely does the minimum for the PT test. Say a woman does 42 push-ups, she gets 100 points. Hold on. Both did 42 push-ups. The difference is that the man only gets 60 points for promotion, whereas the woman gets 100 points for promotion. She don't actually get 100 points, but she basically... If she maxes in her thing by doing the male minimum, she will get the full amount of points that you can get for PT for promotion. 
Oh, and that's a heavy chunk of the promotion thing. You understand? So basically, in order, a woman, if she does the male minimum, she maxes in points, which means that she would be promoted before the male that's stronger than her. You see what I'm saying? Because in order for him to get the 100 points, he has to do 71. He has to do way more than she can do. It's the same way in the Marines. These are the numbers. These are, the other one was the Air Force. They only run a mile and a half. This is a two mile run. So 1854, she gets 19 minutes. Well, 1854, and he gets 1554. She gets three more minutes than he does. You understand? And that's what's supposed to be fair. All right. The women worship, it has nothing to do with equality because I just showed you that the women, nobody considers the women physically equal to the man. The women don't build anything either. Again, I just showed you nobody thinks that the woman is physically equal to the man. The woman is not equal to the man. The woman equal means the same in every aspect, and she's not. The difference is, is that the black man values the contribution of the woman and her contribution as a female with feminine and femininity was just as important as the male with masculinity. See, so there's a difference between considering something equal or considering, some, considering something equally important. A dyke will never be equal to me as far as strength. But if you choose that way, go the LGBT way, then not only do you not only will you never ever be equal to a male, but then you have squandered your value as a woman. So now not only do we say, well, you're not equal to us, but also you have no value to us. There's no read for us the reason for us to build for you, provide for you, protect you, because you want to be one of us. And it really sucks for the women that talk to that kind of woman. Because now you're looking for the protection of the men because she's looking for the protection of the men. But she want to maintain that lifestyle because the Europeans under which we live, this system lives, allows that for her. Right? Because they created this system specifically to watch the women tear the community up by promote, promoting them out front. And me, I'm just starting trying to establish the natural order of things. No woman runs me. I do what I want to do because, one, I think it might be fun, or the other reason I do it um, is because it's the right thing to do. It's not the right thing to take care of a woman that has another man. It's not the right thing to take care of a woman that ain't bringing you nothing to the table. Why you wanna? Why you going to look after them? Why you want to um, have fun with them? Right? They, they, because they'll use your resources like that, right? That belief in woman worship here destroyed Egypt. And they got overrun by the Assyrians. See, while men create all this stuff, the Valley of the Kings and stuff, trial and error and junk, all right? Women want to come and take their glory. Have You've heard it. We are the builders. You, you should ask, well, what did you build? 
The women come to you that women are the creators, the builders and stuff, yet they have created nothing and built nothing. As a matter of fact, the Nubians, when they got a queen and she led the Nubians, that's when the Egyptians went and ran on them and absorbed them. Every nation that was run by a queen, with the exception of the European nations, is because the queen is more of a political power than um force power she don't lead people out in battle like queen elizabeth did not all right and at that town time they they respected the crown it was all about the crown not necessarily who was under it that mess don't work in africa it's all about who's the king is and what happens when the king leads out into battle, battle. All right, and this is what we have. A woman can't lead men into battle. I mean, she could, but then they would be decimated. Remember, we were talking about the natural laws. Part of the consequences of not obeying the natural laws of femininity and masculinity is that when you don't obey it, you get what's happening in the black community. And what's happening in the black community is an abysmal disaster. And no one can argue that. Period. Remember, all these organized religions are evil and they're no good for us. So I'm going after them all. Y'all know what time it is. Share it. Oh, and brothers and sisters. Any B-A-W, a.k.a. Eve the Betrayer, still seeking to be worshipped worship as a god, let them hit that wall alone and let judgment come for that wicked one. With that said, I'm out again. Hey, um, this is a no de-policing zone, but you see with these... BFEMs have planned for us. Out of uh, the frying pan into the burning house. Well, let them go into that house, stay in that house alone. There is fire. There has been smoke for a while. It's um, your job to get out the righteous and let them burn by themselves. Let them hit that wall, that burning wall. With that said, I'm out.